We expect that process to take, to take about six months. So what we're asking for is a six, for, is a six month, three hour per month commitment, um, actually in a physical place, and throughout the month, maybe five or 10 hours of research and reading that stuff. Mm -hmm. Are the meetings open? They are open, yes. No secret handshakes or? There is a secret handshake. There is a secret handshake. <laughs> Where are they held? But it's uh, secret, you can't do it. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Do you know where they will be held? I don't. Okay. Do you have a model for 100% saturation of the county? Uh, no, we have a model for 100% saturation of Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy. Mm -hmm. And what's your um, time frame on that? Five years. Okay. Cool. And nice. we have a model for our saturation of individual towns, first the one at a time, then two at a time for a year, and then three at a time after that. Okay, now if can we talk about the geeky if you're, if, you, if you're on the board, <laughs> is there any way that you could actually have that area of your town be first? <laughs> 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 that, that is not the best way. By being on the board, you, you, is not your best route to that. Your best route to that. Your best route to that is to get your neighbors together, start organizing your community, and come up with a pot of money. Yeah. <laughs> that's all, because because that that's what we have to. Until we get our financing lined up, which we don't know how long it'll take, but we're looking for about eight million dollars in financing total. Uh, then. We, we can only roll out a certain number of blocks per month, and right now that's Thomasboro, and after that it'll be some other areas. Okay. Okay. I'm very curious about what are you going to do about uh, when people like Comcast set their uh, vicious uh, legal dogs on you? I don't have any concerns about that because we are we're we're just a company happens to be a cooperative company. Um, that there's nothing novel or anti-competitive about what we're doing. There's a lot of anti-competitive about Comcast, though. Uh, I will fix that. <laughs> I've only seen them do that in cases where there is uh, municipal, where the municipality itself is trying to do it. And even then, they've lost in Illinois. So quite frankly, I'm, I'm just not that concerned about it. Well, as I mentioned earlier uh, in the meeting, they've come up with this plan that it's actually fairly cheap for whatever bit rate they're uh, going to be providing. And I think that's the way they fight back. Now that they've got competition, they're going to start lowering the prices. Yeah, the main, thing, the main thing to be concerned about about Comcast is that they have enough money that they could do lost leaders in this community without a problem uh -huh. indefinitely. We don't think that the only, people will, that the only reason people will be switching is the price. We think that people will probably switch also for service level, local community to, to support and performance because with and it's just cooler. I mean, it's just it's just the thing to do. I mean, and some of us have had experience with Comcast. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, I paid double just to throw the Comcast modem at the guy as he drives down the street. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's not getting that much money, so it's, it's not it's not nice to hit the I, I don't right care. Man, it's Comcast, <laughs> man, it's a target. <laughs> you want to talk about geeky stuff? There you go. So. Um, <laughs> What we're deploying is technically known as an active Ethernet fiber network. So each home has a fiber, normally a single fiber running to it. That fiber goes back to a glorified Ethernet switch. So this is not telco based. So, so you don't have all the you don't have the, the all the weird levels of service like T1 and T3 and then correct all that. That said, you can easily emulate a T1 or a T3 yeah. over gateway Ethernet. Right, so right. It's uh, th those things can be done. Just we don't. Uh, There's a something 48 and a something. You know, yeah, the, emulating emulate emulating anything higher than a DS3 or actually an OC3. OC3 is, is, is OC48. Yeah, the, the, no, we, want a, we want an OC seven sixty eight. OC seven sixty eight. I think that if uh, if anybody asks for that and is willing to pay one tenth of the telco's price for that, <laughs> I'm willing to provide it. So <laughs> that, that, I'm, I'm drawing that line in the sand. You find me the customer, and I'll uh, I'll find a way to do it. I know a place in Mahama where you can probably stick a point of process and everything and stuff. I've got a coworker who's got full Cisco CCIE lab in his house and everything <laughs> and stuff with 
Just his power bill runs about 400 a month. Don't oh my whoa. God. Just from all his Cisco switches <laughs> and everything. So. Pretty inexpensive. Yeah, he has to have the window open in the yeah. winter just to keep it. Yeah, right. Jeez. Yeah. Keep it cool enough. And you said you were a gay question. question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first is going to be very hard. Are your tables going to be strung out? Is it just called a whole bunch of utility poles? Or are you going to bury it? For the most part, underground. Underground. So, um, we, the only places we would do it overhead is if we could not, for some reason, get a permit to do it underground. Um, we found that a lot of people say they do that because it's more reliable. That's a good reason. We've also found it's less expensive if you have a long time for us. So mm. that's, that's the reason we, we do it that way. But in my case, the UC2B fiber is on the other side of the street. So you would actually dig another hole? Un under the street. Correct. So in Champaign-Urbana, how we build out is probably not quite the same as we would be doing it in Thomasboro, because we make the rules in Thomasboro, whereas UCB has made the rules right now in Champaign-Urbana. In Thomasboro, we try and use the rear utility easement. Uh, we find it easier to get to the houses and less destructive of stuff in general. Um, in some places, you don't have that, and then you have to go in the front of the oh, houses. Okay. But, uh, it's just because... Like I said, the front of my house faces the street, so it sounds like you either go from another fiber or run all the way to the other end of the house, in my case. Um, I guess I don't understand the details, but I can guarantee that we, we can find a way to get a fiber to your house. Yeah, wh wh where there's a checkbook, there's a way. That's, that's right. That's true. Um, yeah. Uh, so, beyond the fact that it's active, active Ethernet, um, single fiber means that we use something called a bidirectional SFP. You have one color of light that's sending the transmit and another color that's sending the receive. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that's more innovative about the way we do it than the way a lot of other people do it is that we've brought that price way down. We've, we've gotten it down to about uh, $100 for the electronics total, including the, the, the core side and the consumer wow. side. And that's about a... Well, it's about an eighth of what UCB's is and about a sixth of what normal telcos you know, pay for that. And that's just basically by recognizing that all we're doing is Ethernet. We don't, we don't need much more than Ethernet, and you've already got a router probably that's going to do everything else. So that's what we okay. that in. The stuff I was involved in, it was like 800 bucks for the customer apprentice stuff, and even that was kind of touch and go. Yeah, we've got that down to $52, the yeah. customer apprentice stuff. That's um, huge. It, it, it's definitely one of the things that makes it possible for us to offer services at prices that are actually affordable. Um, yeah. Did you have other technical things you wanted to ask about? Well, <coughs> I was I was going to ask. It's not technical it's so, so much as more. just uh, forward looking. You know, you're you're talking about a five year horizon. But what about what about ten years? What about you know five to ten years? The growth that we've seen in the bit rate that was reliably delivered via wireless through, say, you know, 3G when it came to Champagne, people were like, oh my god, I can actually see a web page, to so now there's LTE, and they're doing 20 megabits for <coughs> over LTE. What's that going to look like in five years, and how, and, and you know, is that going to affect the, the proposition for wired connection? And are you going to be sitting there with a bunch of fiber that nobody wants? Or you know, why, why not just get one of the, a little postage stamp sized modem that they can stick in the middle of their house and have, you know, 100 gigabit or 100 megabit, uh, you know, internet in their house wireless? So as I mentioned, we started out wireless, and so we have a we have a so ton of background in, in in wireless. I love wireless. It's great technology. It really does a good job in some situations. Those situations are the more rural ones, the ones where the density is lower. Yeah, right. What you need, it, so we, we believe that the future will be a hybrid wired and wireless future. Uh, the reason for that is that the cell phone network is dependent on so many things that it will never be as robust as the landline network. And even though it gets well, it's faster, today. It, it, it's true today, and, and it's more of a, theoretical limitation than, a, than, a, than just a, you know, 
all we have to do is do a little bit more, put up another cell, to, cell tower. That's going to be the case for, for the foreseeable future. And although it will get faster, people's demand gets faster. And right now, you see those speeds on the cell network because there's not really that many people using it. Um, the, the number of people who have 4G and who are using it to the level that they're using their landline connection is quite low. So long term, we expect people to continue to have smart devices that do more and more and are able to watch video on them and that kind of thing. But we expect them to need or to, to prefer to switch to a land-based connection via Wi-Fi, for example, when they are, when one is available, basically. And actually, that's what LTE is doing, is switching you a lot of times to Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. from, from Wi-Fi to landline connections, instead of cell connections. The, the one way that you can tell that is, you know, in, in the U.S. almost everything is money-based. You can see there's a, there's a trend for more and more speed in cell phone service and a price associated with that, that you have to pay per gigabyte use instead well, of um, the just The gigabytes. incumbent uh, <laughs> provider's business model depends upon monetizing this service in a way that is rapacious, I think. I mean, I, I think they, they, they see it as a way to get more money, whereas I think somebody like a co-op or something is looking for, you know, provide service and not so much, you know, like we need to, you know, we need, we, we need a 30% growth curve every year. I definitely would not be one to say that AT&T and T-Mobile, AT&T Wireless and T-Mobile aren't trying to make a very, very healthy profit on their cell phone well, they are. That's they the, certainly that's are. That's their whole point. But it is a limited resource. The, the amount of bandwidth that your phone, that if everybody who had a cell phone was using a significant amount of bandwidth, there simply would not be enough capacity right now. And that's why there's so much demand for the FCC. Well, 50 people, on a, a 50 people on a tower start watching a YouTube video, it, it, it would it fall would, apart. Right. Well, if, and you think, so, if you think about the actual amount of time your phone is actually on the connections that is <coughs> AT&T versus on a connection that is a wireless connection at your house or Panera's or wherever it may not be, I would say it's less than 2% of my actual time is spent on the wireless the cell network. network. That, that's probably too true for, a, for, for this population, certainly. Yeah, it's probably true for but, like 95 to 98 percent of the people. Now, there are some people that aren't, but I, I mean... I would say that that's, it's reversed. The people who have their phones set up to use Wi-Fi, that's a, you know, that's a technical barrier that many people have not crossed. I would agree with that. Um, and it may get easier over time, but I don't, I don't really know how. I mean, Grandma's got a, wife, got, a, got a cell phone, but she probably doesn't have a router. And if she has a router, she doesn't know how to tell her cell phone or that she needs to tell her cell phone to talk to her router. Right. There's a lot of technical hurdles there. And again, it'll get easier. Our, our belief is that it'll be a hybrid system. You'll have landlines feeding physical locations and Wi-Fi on, in those physical locations. And the cell network covering the spaces between those physical locations. <coughs> and, and, and as a co-op that has, uh, as you said, a desire to provide as great services as possible, will of course support all of those uses and, and do as much wireless as makes sense. Um, but I don't want to, I don't think it's, it's uh, honest to try and claim that the future, in the future, technology will solve all problems with, with Wi-Fi and the wireless performance. Um, it's always going to be a tear down from wired performance and our, our demand is likely to continue to grow. For, for both wired and wireless now. So uh, you also talked about, you were asking about capacity long term. Well, uh, one of the cool things about fiber is that it does have a lot of capacity. Yeah. And it's very easy to increase the count of the cable. So that makes the capacity, e even though it, it, on a given fiber, cost can limit how much you can do. If you have a bundle of fibers, it, it becomes quite inexpensive. So we're designing our network to be relatively easy to upgrade from 1 gig to 10 gig to the switches. T to the home is probably going to be 1 gig for some time. 